you you really you're a real person, not a recording. I'd be like, nope, I have hair, emotions, everything. I'm a human. <laughs> <laughs> then I come home and like some roommates are home, and I'd open my bathroom door and it's like, whew, someone destroyed my bathroom. You've got yourself a poopy ghost. Poopy ghost. Mm, those are the worst ones. Walking by Shane. And for whatever reason, I know this sounds corny, but for whatever reason, I felt like, I'm going to know that dude. Interesting. I had Demi's old dressing room, I believe. Really? I believe mine Demi was... Demi Lovato? Was it haunted? It was haunted by Demi Lovato. He's still no. very much alive. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm going to burp. I'm going to burp, and I don't want to... This is your brand? It's Okay. Okay, it was a false alarm. That was gross. <laughs> oh. What a way to start this beautiful podcast. Oh, I hope Hello. we haven't started yet. We have. Oh, damn oh, it. God. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Smoshcast. It is Courtney hosting today Woo. with my boys, Shane Top and Damien Hangs. I'm the second one. <laughs> <laughs> Damien Hung. Damien Hung. I'm so excited to do this with you guys today. Me I'm, too. Like, just love having spending time with you guys. I do too. <laughs> yeah. I woke up this morning and uh, forgot about it for the first part of my morning. So I was like, I was ready to roll in like completely like five days unshaven, a sloppy shirt, just like my glasses. And I was just like, oh, wait, I am going to have to be on camera today. I should probably give a crap about my. I love rugged Damien. Oh, yeah. I love rugged, <laughs> rugged <laughs> smosh boys. You don't say. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Hmm, Colonel. <laughs> Colonel, I'm dummy thick. <laughs> Would you grow a mustache? Never just a mustache. It doesn't complement my face very well. I did once for a, a short film that my friends were doing, but beyond that, nah. Really? But you have darker hair. See, I feel like for me, I can't, because with blonde, blondish hair... A mustache would look like I'd end up on, you know, some sort of Netflix uh, documentary about how I'm the worst person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's that's like we're blonde. calling you out, Gus Johnson. Oh, Those no. with blonde no. mustaches, blonde mustaches make you a criminal. They make you like literally. Are you look, saying look Gus Johnson's a criminal? Yeah, look, it, it makes him look like possibly. <laughs> I think he would agree. <laughs> Maybe. I, know, I feel like kidding. our number one comment is going to be from Gus Johnson being like, hey, don't speak for me anymore. Don't do that. Hey, man, I, you know, I help you guys out a lot. And wow. OK. You know That's my wish? Gus Johnson impression. Hmm. I want to see everyone in this because we have a lot of bearded and like facially hairy men in this in this Smosh staff. We do. I would just love to have one mustache Monday just for me. Well, yeah, that was the, the joy of when we had Joe Beretta around. Mm. You know, Matt Robb and Ian both have beards. I say Ian needs to go mustache Ian soon. I'd love to see that. Because we've seen beard Ian a lot. We need mustache Ian. Yeah, but mm. not not like handlebar mustache like he's done in the past. Like, I think I like want... reverse Hitler, like just missing here, <laughs> just, just so missing just in the middle, the sides. Yeah, yeah. mustache around but not under the nostrils. Uh, I feel like Shane, you could totally just rock like the simple, like the simple <sighs> upper lip, the like the yeah. hipster mustache. I think you could totally do it. I see it. your hair's not that blonde. It's salt and peppery, I guess. But it's, it's visible, though. Like, you can see it, right? Yeah. Like it's, yeah. yeah. I yeah, don't I know. See it. I just, uh, I don't know. Every time I've done it, I'm like, it's not visible enough. Mm. It's kind of just like, oh, I just, just, did you get a tan right there? Mustache the Monday, guys. Okay. I want Mustache Monday. I'll do it, too. You know what? If Tinder for Hot Dogs gets 10,000 likes, <laughs> <laughs> we'll do uh Oh, yeah. that's right. That's oh, yeah. out today, ladies and oh, gentlemen. And Tinder for of which, Hot Dogs. Hot Dogs. You're wearing the, the I'm Smosh wearing shirt? The, I'm wearing the Tinder for Hot Dogs shirt. You can still get it. If you get it, you will feel powerful. You will be stronger. You will run faster. You will okay. ace uh, your I think, exams. Shit, I condom. promise. I don't condom. think legally we can make those kinds of promises. No. You it's will a do nice shirt. everything It's just a nice shirt. Better. Nope. And look down. Then the hat. He's wearing the hat. He's wearing, I'm wearing the hat. a hat, smosh hat, and we're drinking. I got two beverages going on out of these smosh cups. Your thirst will be so much more quenched by a smosh water bottle. Hold on. I don't think you can say any. Yes, of that. it will be more quenched than if you drink Your water on its can own. Never it's be not quenched, as good. <laughs> My roommate was listening to that video last night, and I just came downstairs hearing like, "What were you?" And I was like, oh, yeah, you're my roommate, huh? That's my favorite. 
favorite video, dude. Yeah. How's that been? How's it been living with Mark? It's great. Uh, for those of you that don't know, um, my roommate is Mark Rob, also known as Matt Rob, our boss's little brother. And they look exactly the same. They look the, the same. Boys, Their yeah. speech patterns are the same, but <clears throat> Mark is a, a certified weeb like myself. <laughs> so we're always just talking about video games and like we watched the My Hero Academia movie last night. Um, yeah, we. it's good. He's a... Uh, Coming from Matt Rob's place, like they're big on family. Family is important to them. So when we moved in together, he was like, you know, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm reclusive. Like mm-hmm. I stay in my room, even though I've got you this are. whole apartment to myself. I am, and then okay. he is too. So he was like, you know, the only thing I ask is that once a week we have some form of like family time, whether we Aww. make a dinner together or we watch a movie or something like, like that. Fly and a I was kite like, at the park, like kite at the park, and I'm the kite. <laughs> play catch, um, <laughs> play catch, and I'm the ball. But you know. I, I like it a lot. It feels good. It feels like, you know, I don't have a lot of connections that I hold on to necessarily. So it's important to have that in the home space. That's, that's really awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. really sweet. I had no idea that, that he did that. I yeah. think that's something really nice. He's a good dude. I've always liked Mark. Yeah, he has a very, like, meme type humor. He is a meme. He literally is a meme mm-hmm. lord. Yeah, mm-hmm. he he. I think he was one of the first like meme lords in our office. He was he was making memes for the Smosh Games Instagram for a while. For, right? for a, yeah, and he was like kind of he was taking a pretty big part in like some of the Smosh Games content when mm-hmm. Matt Rob was around. Yeah. he was the originator of Munge. That's right. He was off camera saying yeah. Munge, and then it became a shame thing. When well, what happened was we were. I think it's in the footage of the of the Mari Craft. Mm-hmm. Is you hear off camera. Because I'm trying to come up with words. I'm like, what's a word for this? And off camera, Mark Rob just yells, munge. And I, I start laughing and I'm like, great. And I just started using it a ton. Mm-hmm. So that voice that's off camera that you hear is Mark Rob. Mm-hmm. Aww. And yep. we've come full circle. Yep. That's great. Now he's my roommate. I miss having roommates. I'm not going to lie. Yeah? Yeah. I feel like I, for a while, I, I like living alone. Mm-hmm. But after we had that like smosh party over the weekend, Oh, the Smosh Summer Party. The Smosh Summer Party. Nice. Yeah, that was just a fun little night. And, like, seeing our crew's house was so sick. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's how my previous roommates, that's how we wanted our place to look when we lived oh, together. Man. But, like, we were all, like, too poor and, like, couldn't <laughs> make it happen. <laughs> yeah. And it was also three guys. It was our first time living away from home. And oh, that's tough. No, Boys, that's tough. I love you, but Mama Fairy is gone. Yep. The dishes don't disappear anymore. <laughs> also, shame on you if you already made your mom do all the dishes. Yeah. Pull some weight, kids. Dude, coming from a lot of siblings, we all had those chores. I yeah. came from doing my favorite chore growing up was sweeping and doing the floors. So I mm. and I was the only one really doing that for the most part at the apartment. But. Oh snap! You hear that apartment mate? Oh, called out. Uh oh. I think there's just a lot people forget that need to be cleaned in an mm-hmm. apartment. Like floors. It's also a tough thing with roommates because I feel like I live alone and I have for most of my life. And I will go through phases where I'm bad at doing Mm. the dishes or whatever or taking out the trash. And you go in and out of those. But when you live with roommates, you really notice when your roommates are going through that phase. (laughs) But you're unaware of when you're going through that phase. Yeah. Um, so that can be tough. There's less pressure because you know if you're okay with it. Yeah. It and you don't have me. to worry about like, you know, Mark and I being roommates last night. Like there were a ton of dishes piled up and I was like, hey, it, what's the deal with the dishwasher? He's like, oh, it's full. I'll deal with it later. And I was like, great. As soon as you do that, I'll do the dishes and put them in and reload it. And nice. it's like, great. So as long as there's open communication, it's fine. Right. But That's good. if there wasn't that, it would be an issue. I think when, when Damien and I live together, what's what's tough is when you have more than three roommates because mm-hmm. yeah. that oh communication becomes impossible yeah and uh, yeah, it's harder to place blame and stuff we sometimes <laughs> we had we filtered through a lot of roommates in that year really that I was there. Yeah, yeah it was a total how many people overall there was four well, at a time right it was four the four of us to start then one of our roommates uh left out of town or moved out and so we had another girl that i knew from college uh come live with us then another roommate of mine that was a friend from college um left for a while and had a couple uh move in and take his space and then they left he came back and then his boyfriend moved in and so and that was that was tricky for me because living with a couple is very difficult Mm -hmm. so we had two different couples two different couples both times look i'll throw shade because i don't know them that well both times we weren't aware it was going to be a couple oh, i wasn't aware that no. it was going to be a couple i and so suddenly i think i think the second time the second time he asked my the, permission he's like would you be comfortable if my right. boyfriend moved in and i was like let me think about that and then, that's right yeah, the but, second time was was a little bit more known the first time 
I, I didn't sucks. I didn't know mm-hmm. and I was like what is this uh, yeah. and yeah it was a lot of a lot of cars in our driveway <laughs> yeah. so that would sometimes be a thing you'd get up I'd get up six in the morning I'd be like well got to wake up three people to move their to cars get out, mm-hmm. to get out and that would happen sometimes yeah it was uh the thing and wow. then sometimes the dishes mm. were just there oh yeah they ruined a pan of mine because they scrubbed it with like steel wool and on the bottom of it oh, it was like, no. extremely scratched so i had to like hit up my the actual friend that i knew um and i was like hey man like the friends you had move in they just destroyed a lot of my like cookware and i don't really know how to bring it up they like, were messy they were they messy were, people. we call them we delightfully and lovingly call them uh they were a couple of uh, dirty hippies <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, uh, when they first moved in, I pretty quickly was like, they're kind of dirty. And Damien was was <laughs> giving them the benefit of the doubt. He was like, no, nah, man, they're they're great. Like, they're good people. Like, you know, I think they're just getting used to it. Maybe they're just like adjusting whatever. And then like cut to two months later, Damien's just like, oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> Should I tell the gross story? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I got a face full of the f- gross story. Oh, uh, God. Oh, wait. So, oh, there's several. You have a gross. You have a worst the gross story. One. I have a different gross story. All Come right. Here. You Tell go me. first. So this is really rough. Y'all prepare yourself. Skip to like a minute and a half from now. Gross things ain't your thing. <laughs> yeah. So um, I just opened the door one day to the bathroom that was shared. Uh, there were two bathrooms. One was me and this couple and uh, the, the first couple, the hippie one. Uh-huh. Um, not the ones that I actually knew. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I open up the door and I'm just hit with this ungodly smell oh, and I realized no. um, the girl in the couple was uh, on her period uh-huh. she had uh, taken out a tampon and wrapped it in a toilet paper roll uh, to be like I'll deal with this later left it on the counter and wasn't running the fan was running the heater <gasps> so it was a full day of hot air cooked period flying. baked tampon it was just like ah, ah, like it was just Gross. it was oh my that is not Cool, man. It was not particularly hygienic. That is that. That was. Uh, but she must have been so embarrassed. I didn't bring I it up. I don't think. So. I don't. Th- they, you just uh, threw it away and moved on. No, but on. also, also, I, I can't stress like they seemed like people that didn't care. Yeah. That's the only. That's they the were reason. nice too. Like they, they were, were nice really people. nice. Look, I I have relatives who are like this. People who just aren't bothered by messiness at all so they, their apartments will be messy their homes will be super messy and it doesn't bother them that's fine but when you live with roommates that gets really tough because I'm super bothered by that mm-hmm. like living alone I I can handle disorganization I can't handle like if a piece of food is just on a on a counter mm. I'm like I gotta get that's mm-hmm. gross that's slimy and gross and it'll start to smell unless it's bananas unless it's bananas which I got them all shelf. over the place <laughs> uh, no uh, so my gross story was after they moved out they, uh, they, Damien, and they were really bad. They would leave food all over the place. They like, our fridge was gross when they were there. Cause they would just like leave unopened food all over oh and like not, God. not throwing things away. Mm-hmm. But after they, it was like a month, a month after, after they, they left, after they moved out. And I was like, Oh, we we're like, thank God they're gone. Like nice people. But God, I'm so like, not they were good messy. roommates. Nice people. Not good roommates. Right. We were getting a lot of fruit flies. And I was like, what is up with this? I'm like, we're cleaning. I'm like, and oh. and we were all, us all being roommates, we all had our specific cupboards mm-hmm. and like shelves that were ours. So mm-hmm. we knew to clean those, take care of those. And we're getting so many fruit flies. I'm like, where are these coming from? They're not coming from the fridge. There's no food out on the counter that I see. Eventually, one night, I look at a at a cupboard that I'm like, whose cupboard is that? None of us have been using that mm-hmm. for a while. So I go and I oh, open it no. and I'm talking like a horror movie, just a swarm of fruit flies. Winnie the Pooh style, like, 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 like a cartoon cloud, swarm. No. Like a cloud of mm. black flies <laughs> out. And I think, I think Damien probably heard from his room, me just going, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and he comes out to the kitchen. He's like, what? <laughs> flies horror. everywhere. Oh, no. And what they had left was like, I, th- I honest to God, we some, don't know. Some fruit. It was a literal black sludge. It wasn't yeah. even the shape of a fruit or anything anymore. It was just black. And it tar. was high up. It was high up in one mm-hmm. of the top shelves of a cupboard. So we just didn't see it and somehow didn't smell it. And it just rotted. Mm. Oh, and God. I mean, it was awful. Uh, we threw that away and then <laughs> set up a ton of fruit fly traps and just had just. 
Oh, oh God. no. So this brings us all back to the original point. Courtney, you miss having roommates? Do you miss having roommates, Courtney? <laughs> I think if I were to go back into the roommate gang game, it'd have to be in a house <laughs> uh-huh. like the crew did. And it has to be like people that I know and I don't want to be people that are moving out of their mommy's house for the first time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah so, Noah, sorry, you're out of the race if we were ever to become roommates because you used to live with your mommy. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that's awful. I never got bad like that for me. Mm. Well, and also for the crew living together, they're all a little bit older. Um, and just Because, you know... Like, I look back on what I was even like when we were still roommates, whatever, and I was 22, 23. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I have I am much more organized and clean now than I was then. Yeah. I mean, that's just the Same. fact of the matter, I think. Yeah. I had a mystery pooper, though. No. Um, so when I, when I first moved into my, our place, I was like, guys, sorry, like, I need the master because I need my bedroom connected to my bathroom because, like, I'm the only girl in the house. And I think that's totally that's fair. fair. You know, I like to walk from between my bathroom and my bedroom and don't have clothes on yet. Is that how you shower. presented it, though? Like, sorry, guys, yeah. it's just the way it is. I have to. I, no, I, I, I just I, – and I said I was, like, willing. I paid more for it and stuff. Yeah. But, like, so I had my own bathroom. And I had a squatty potty, a nice one. It's I, to this day I still have it. It's like a nice wooden one. Squatty potties, guys, get them. They're they help you with your poops, and they're very comfortable. Yeah, I don't need help. I have a pull up bar <laughs> above my toilet. And I hang upside down. <laughs> you don't even poop. You just lift once, and it stays in the same spot. <laughs> The poop just suspends in air. Uh, I hang like a bat from my oh ceiling. Oh my god! And just poop down my, just trails down my back. It's only natural, you guys. It's how we were designed. Guys, it's it's new age medicine. <laughs> it's how you rid your body of toxins. I do a pull up and then I kiss a little essential oil right at the top, uh, oh which my also helps god. me poop. God, what is this? squatty potties? What are you in the seventies? Is that a 70s thing? No. Oh. I was just trying to make Squatty Potty sound old. Mm. Okay, so I had a Squatty Potty, and this is a commodity, you know? Some people need commodity. the... Commodity. Commodity. <laughs> oh. oh, sorry. Oh, had to. So sometimes, like, after a day of being away, I leave my apartments clean, smelling normal, then I come home, and, like, some roommates are home, mm. and I would open my bathroom door, and it's like, whew, someone... Destroyed my bathroom while Ooh, I was away. Ooh, there's been this a happened more than once. Uh huh. And oh. I would, I would, we'd had a group chat, and I'd be like, "Hey guys, please ask me before you enter my space and use my bathroom. Like, yeah. if you need to use my bathroom, go for it. But like, I feel uncomfortable when people go through my, open my door that's shut, go mm-hmm. through my bedroom into the bathroom and not totally, say anything. totally. So like, they would all be like, "Yeah, for sure, totally." And then it happened One again. of them's a liar. And I was like, dude, unless there's some and they the just landlords flush? coming. No, they would flush. It would just smell awful, or like uh, clearly things that were moved around. <laughs> You've got yourself a poopy ghost. Poopy ghost. Mm, those are the worst ones. And then it got to the point where, like, two of the roommates were like, dude, I seriously don't know what the hell's going on. One of them had their own bathroom as well. Like they were attached to a bathroom, mm. so there was no reason for them to go into mine. There was three total bathrooms. There's two. Uh, so it was like a, a one that was it was connected to another bedroom and connected to the kitchen. Mm. What probably happened is one of them was using it and the other one had to take a just massive dump mm-hmm. and was like, I got to, uh, you know what, I got to enter the lair. I don't know. Dumpers got to dump, dude. I don't Dumpers got to dump. But it got to the point where I was like finding evidence of like which roommate it was. <laughs> Like a specific kind of Stephen. <laughs> like there's a specific kind of hair, and I was like, I know which roommate this oh is. Oh my god! Well, only one not of my roommates takes hair. hairy poops. Oh, I was like, Curly. Not a, not a, this is. <laughs> I've seen all your crotches. I know which pubes this was. No, it was. They each had very distinct hairstyles, so mm. I it was very obvious, and just like it never, it never got addressed. It oh was, man, that sucks. Yeah. There is literally nothing better than. I think the the number one perk of living alone is taking dumps in your home mm-hmm. alone is the greatest thing mm-hmm. of all time. With the door open. Oh no! See, I I love full on security. Like oh. I wish I had a compound like Area Fifty One <laughs> where I'm like, well, I gotta use the bathroom. I go. There's an elevator. Welcome back, sir. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Heading down to level fifty. It's like it's like good thing, sir. See you in a month. And like I take this elevator down to the core of the earth, and it's a airtight cell, like 
nothing's getting in there. No, uh, nukes could not affect what? this place. And there is a single toilet. And I can use that. But if What's you die there, no bathroom? one would find you. Oh, it's up. What is your ideal bathroom? Like, what, like, what would you keep in there? In that bathroom in the core of the earth that you, if you died, you'd probably be lost. Um, you know, probably some, uh, some nice essential oils, like a, <laughs> you know, uh, like some, some nice scents, mm. a candle or two. Wow. Mm. Uh, one of those like old school, like bathtubs that are kind of like st- out in the open, not attached to a wall yeah, or, yeah. you know, the claw, like, the claw bathtub. Yes. Yeah, yeah. One of those just right yeah. next to it. I would never use it, but it's just there for decoration. Mm. Inside of it is a harpist. Yeah. <laughs> No, but see that that ruins the vibe. It had to be a robot har- harpist because well, I can't have a human. Of course, can't have a human there. I thought that was implied. And yet somehow, if I had a cat, that cat would still find its way to the doorway of that cell yeah. and just be like clawing oh. underneath it. <laughs> they love rubbing up against my legs when I'm taking a duke. Oh my <laughs> and, god! And I, there is something cats just despise when you close the door and take take a dump. They're like, yeah. no, you. Yeah, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. What are you doing in there? It's yeah. weird, actually, because I, I was helping someone who had new, like gotten a cat, and it's like actually good to put their litter boxes in more social places, like instead mm. of hiding it away. Huh. Uh, so I wonder if they're like, "Why are you hiding your boobs? <laughs> you gotta be social <laughs> with your boobs." Cats love to give a show. All right, everyone, <laughs> <laughs> if you would look towards the foyer, <laughs> hey, I everybody. am going to drop. <laughs> Duke, S- several Duke. Okay. <laughs> what are you staring for? It's a party. Hey. Oh God. Oh God. Anyways, you did. Did you have a bathroom connected to the guest house when you? No. Were living, when you when I lived with together? Damien, I lived in this back house area that was really not meant to be. Let's lived just in. call it a sunroom attached to a garage. That's really what it was. It had it cement was walls. A guest house. Cement walls, terracotta floor. Well, your back wall was the f- neighbor's fence. Yes, <gasps> my back wall was the gate. Yeah. yeah, the back wall was the cement wall that the other side was another person's backyard. Um, also, yeah. th- another wall was just th- uh, the wall for the garage, and mm-hmm. it had a window into the garage, even though it would be pitch black at night. So I'm like, that I ran an extension cord through, so you could it use was power. Awesome. Damien, Damien was super useful in like setting up because it really wasn't meant to be lived in. It had one outlet, and we were like trying to figure out. But uh, <laughs> so I put my wardrobe up against that window, mm-hmm. even though late at night, like I'd be sleeping, and I would see the light go on if people were doing laundry or oh whatever. My God. Was, um, it, it was not ideal, huh? And that 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 garage was also just kind of creepy because it was just dirty and like weird. Yeah. Found a I had a stray cat get in there once. That was an adventure. <gasps> we had a bunch of, so we had a bunch of stray cats. We had a family of stray cats in our backyard and they would chill on my sunroof a lot of the times. Uh, so I'd wake up and just see a couple like laying on it. Aww. Well, speaking of uh laying around your guest house, you had an interesting thing happen. Oh then. yeah. Uh, I want to hear this story. So yeah, I, uh, the guest house had a sliding glass door mm-hmm. uh which when I first moved in didn't have curtains or anything. So it was just kind of like, here I am, here's my whole room. So I had to put up curtains, but they were kind of like I could see shadows moving back and forth on the other side of it. And, you know, people would go in and out. Uh, we didn't use our front door a lot because I think it was kind of broken, right? Was it? The oh, front, that the front sounds door, right. The yep. front door was broken, so you had to use the back door. So people would enter and exit through the back door. And uh, so I got very used to that. And uh, one one day I'm at home, and uh, all of a sudden I see a couple figures walk past. And I'm like, who, who is that? And they just go to our, my, our backyard, but they're walking slowly. And I'm like, what is this? What time this? of day was it? Middle of the day. Mm-hmm. What? Like middle of the day. I just want to say 2 or 3 o'clock mm. p.m. Uh, Damien's not home. I'm home and uh, one of our other roommates is home. And she was inside the main house. So I, I kind of like look out one of my windows and I see it's just two teenagers. Uh, clearly like a couple. Uh, mm. Like, I don't know how old. I'm assuming teenagers. They look like teenagers. And they're kind of like walking around. And I'm just like, what? the hell are they doing trespassing in our backyard and they go around our corner to the other side where it's just an at like the side yard side yeah, side, side yard yeah. whatever and they walk back there and i'm like what are they doing back there and suddenly i see his feet just like laying out <gasps> mm-hmm. from the side and i'm like all right i don't know what they're doing I, I i become like an old man here i'm like what are these teens doing back here <laughs> well you texted me I texted Damien, and I, oh, I, as they were walking back, I sent him a photo of just these people in our backyard. I'm just like, there are people in our backyard. I don't know what they're doing here. They didn't do anything because I 
opened up my sunglass door. I run into the house, shut the shut the door kind of hard so that I'm like they'll hear that. Ooh. And I talked to my other roommate. I'm like, there are some teens in our backyard. <laughs> There are teens in our backyard and uh, they're up to mischief. And she kind of walks out and we're in the kitchen and we're just like, she's like, what are they doing? I'm like, I don't know what they're doing. And all of a sudden they come back around and they're just in the backyard and they're kind of looking through our window. They probably (gasps) saw us just looking at them and they just slowly make their way back and just leave. Oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I don't know if they're if they're trying to like. I, mean, I think they were trying to like find a nice secluded spot to uh, make whoopee if we're gonna keep sounding like <laughs> well, I, elderly I mean, folks. Yeah, I mean whatever. Because uh, I'm assuming like they probably live on the street with their family, so they have no privacy or whatever. And so they thought, let's. You know what? You know the best place to find privacy? Someone else's backyard, Jeez. where there are several cars in the driveway. Oh, tons! Of, like obvious people are home, and I'm like, what are you what thinking? The hell? And also, they're lucky, like, like, I'm like, there's a lot of crazy people that lived on that street. I'm like, if you would have been a territorial person who's like, get off my property, I have a gun. Like, that could have gone south real quick. Dude, and that happens. Like, Mm -hmm. there are are crazy people who are are excited about the idea of someone entering their property unwanted. Yeah, they're ready to go. I'm like, they're lucky that I was like, just leave, please. I'm glad I didn't have to confront them. I'm glad they just left. I can't believe it was in the middle of the day. That's, it was, a lot of it made no sense. And you mean like really like young teens or like like sixteen, no, they, seventeen? Yeah, probably more like that. Um, they could have been twenty for all I know. Like they, That's I so had no crazy. idea. But he looked like a young skater dude. And his skater girlfriend. Like, that's what they look like. Sick. So <laughs> sick, dude. Dope. It was one of the weirdest instances there. And we also had, uh, yeah, I, I was also wasn't sure if it would be, we had a neighbor who was an elderly man who had a little bit of dementia. I think he was suffering from sometimes dementia. Sometimes would yeah. kind of enter our property as well, like bring in our trash cans or whatever. He was, he was a really sweet guy. But so I, I was used, I wasn't. Like, I was kind of used to that idea of, oh, mm-hmm. there might be, who, okay. could be a number of people. Yeah. That's um, wild. Yeah. I would, I like, it's weird. That's scary, man. I Like, living alone, I think the one thing that, other than, like, the fact that you don't have roommates, they're, like, around, chumming around, being buddies. Yeah, pooping in your toilet. Pooping, yeah. pooping, yeah. pooping in my yeah, stuff. pooping everywhere. The, the fear factor. Like, mm. the, like, because yeah. I, when I had Django, there was one time when someone, like, entered my little yard area, and, like, that scared oh. the shit out of me I was like middle of the night I woke up to Django growling which he always does like he'll just hear a noise and he'll growl a little bit and I'll like calm him down go back to sleep but like I don't calm him down too much because I actually like like that behavior mm-hmm. like I was very lucky that he happened to be a really good watchdog but one night he was really growling and I heard a gate open and I couldn't tell if it was mine or the person next to me but then next thing you know I hear my my motion detecting camera go off like on my phone like mm. seconds after my dog detected the person and I look at the video and this man like busted through I think and it looked like he was drunk but I couldn't tell if he noticed the camera and ran away or like didn't even mean to push my door open but at the time the gate was like really hard to open like I've Mm -hmm. had to adjust it and fix it to make it easier so I think it took a little bit of work for him to get that thing open I was terrified luckily the neighbor above me um, I texted her. I was like, hey, do you know what's going on? And she sent her, like, gladiator giant boyfriend out to Hell close yeah. my – he closed my gate for me and even walked around. I, like, called the police and reported it and stuff mm-hmm. since I had the cool. video. But, like – that stuff freaks me the hell out. And like, of if I didn't, course. if I didn't have the roommate to text, like, I don't, I wouldn't have been. I didn't sleep very good that night anyway. Of course, but man. like, that stuff's scary, dude. Yeah. Like, that, and that's why it's cool. Like that, I grew up being surrounded by people my whole life. Mm-hmm. So. Well, that's what's nice about living. That is a perk also of living in an apartment complex. Yeah. It's like there are people who are generally in the room next to you mm-hmm. who will hear stuff. Like, oh. I live in a very busy apartment complex, and there are constantly people. <laughs> Right, like walking past, like you're never going to get a chance to yeah. like, there will be people around. My landlord lives in the room next to mine, which it's the only perk I yeah. would say. Mm. Uh, Your landlord lives next to you? She lives in the, or she's, yeah, she's often in the apartment, like wow. right next to mine, which usually sucks. Cause it's just like, ah, oh, like I can't make too much noise probably, Yeah, but she's often like out and about. So she would see anything suspicious wow. yeah. sorry i had some weird kind of happen the other day that you reminded me of oh my god um, yeah dude i think i mentioned this to you apartment life so i was um 
I was streaming on Saturday, and then uh, when I finally finished up, I looked at my phone, and I had like a bunch of missed texts and calls from my roommate, and it was only like 15 minutes before the end of my stream, so I just missed it, but it was all like, hey, man, a little urgent. Can you come down here? Hey, dude, super urgent. Check your phone. Dude, cops are here, and it was like, whoa, whoa. what? And so apparently the uh, lady that lived next to me, who was a little older, and you know, I only met her because I moved in pretty recently, so I, I'd only met her once or twice. She had just gotten out of the hospital. Apparently she passed away and had been there for quite some time, um, which is, you know, there's dying alone is incredibly sad, but for like no one to notice for a long time, that really sucks. And so they wanted to talk to me because I had seen an ambulance outside of our place leaving her area like a few weeks back. Mm -hmm. So I honestly thought she had passed away then. I, you told me about that. Yeah. You go, I remember it was a few weeks ago. You were like, I think my neighbor passed away. And I was like, oh, oh my yeah, God, I'm goodness. so sorry. So yeah. I thought it happened. That, so I came home from work, right? And I see an, a firefighter uh, slash paramedic come out of her place and I like nod and smile and he sort of gives a look like you know oh, like a solemn nod grim. and purse lips and then another guy comes out and I nod and smile and he does the same kind of like grim look and so I thought she'd passed then but for her to, I guess she passed after that and so whatever but either way it was just it kind of screwed me up all weekend because one the idea of it is very sad but two like there's this very thin wall you know separating me yeah. from a person decaying for like a week two weeks i don't know but it was just like oof I, that's uh, sad yeah that's so scary i'm surprised yeah. if she was having like recurring things like that <clears throat> I, that she wasn't in hospice or uh well she had like a lot of helpers like i'd often see people leaving her place who look like they just made like a delivery and she'd be like all right thank you very much thank you goodbye and so i, I mm -hmm. think like can you deliver this and also help me reach this light bulb kind of yeah. situation yeah yeah there's like hospice type stuff where someone will come by for a few hours a day i think yeah. it happens a lot and I think yeah. it, uh, with, you know, with elderly people who live alone, I mean, it just it just happens, man. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I certainly hope, you know, she she might have just passed away in her sleep or something like that. Well, they also wanted to talk to me and Rumi Mark because they were saying like, yeah, we have to make sure it's not a murder. And I'm like, oh, my God. What? Like, Do you think she like maybe she fell? I think it was probably a slip and fall situation. Oh. That was my guess. I don't know anything about it. And it even yeah. feels weird to, you know, but yeah. still. It's so crazy. Like when it's real, like because yeah. you, you hear about it or see it in movies and you're like, oh, it's this thing. But then when it's real, it's like, yeah, not the same at all. It happens all the time. I've read. I honestly, it's weird because in these past couple of weeks, I've read several stories about that where it much worse, where it left like people for years are. Yeah. Oh, you were mentioning that. There was one, some story I read, I, I don't have the link or anything, but I think it happened in Sweden. A, an elderly woman, it was like 10 years. Oh in Jesus in her Christ. place and some like she had automatic payments set up for everything so no bills like racked up and uh somehow the smell or whatever didn't you know oh get around God. so you know it is it is really sad though because that you know a lot of elderly people with maybe they just don't have family or, or whatever that sucks so. that they were just eating away at her funds too like as for yeah. years well yeah because that means she those payments shouldn't have been a thing because yeah. it's not a yeah it's tough man mm. it's so tough i don't uh, think she was watching black mirror in her afterlife you know paying well, for that I, netflix I, yeah. I, I think also there's a lot of my my grandmother was you know she lived alone up until the very end and like a lot of a lot of people are just very proud and and they don't want to go live in a home or whatever mm -hmm. so they want to live live by themselves but at that age anything can happen i mean it just sucks but Sorry to make this a downer. No, it's no. okay. This and like, weird. I, I will say, it also reminds me forever ago, and I've thought about it myself too, because I'm always like, if I, in my apartment by myself, if I ever start choking, my immediate thing before I even try to Run get outside? it out is I'm like, I'm going to open up my front door and I'm going to at least leave the front door open mm. so that I'm like, if I choke, whatever, oh my God. I. People will like. You should have a little metal pipe by your door so that you can go out to like a gate or something and be like ring ding 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 and like really. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone Jeez. should just have a bell. Yeah. <laughs> the, like in the old west when they w would avoid getting buried alive, yeah. so they'd have yeah. a bell attached oh to the coffin. Oh my god! I can't believe that that's a thing that people would have the bell. I wonder if it was effective. I I don't think it. I don't. I think you'd probably suffocate. No, I think there are stories of those. Is that, being that really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey. God, that would be the worst. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh.
Yeah, <laughs> dude. That's <laughs> We're ringing the bell over and over again. <laughs> Nobody hears Someone's you. like, hey, that's a very lively skeleton. <laughs> 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 Better leave him be. God damn, that's dude. That's adorable. <laughs> have you have you ever lived alone, Damien? I have. Um, my first ever bachelor pad after Shane and I were on Disney, um, I lived alone. It was... Looking back, the price is nine years ago. I was just like, I paid that for my own apartment with laundry? Like, oh, man, I miss those days. Aww. It was a great apartment. I really enjoyed it. Um, I became too reclusive because that's my natural state, mm-hmm. and I think that's why it's good for me to live with people. Mm-hmm. Like, I realized, other than, like, recording voiceover auditions, because that's right when I started that out, I would go, like, literal days without talking to or seeing another human being. And I was like, ooh, I like this too much. Oh. I need to not do this from my health, probably. Yeah. Yeah, dang. Um, it was a great apartment. I would never have left uh, except for, you know, I wanted to live with roommates again. And that's when I moved into that house with Shane and my other buddies. And uh, roots often grew into the pipe system. So sometimes it would back up. And me being on the bottom floor, I often had um, poop tornadoes come out of my tub. No. Yeah. And I was like, I ended up cleaning it up myself because I'm like, I'm not going to hire some poor old lady to be like, hey, can you come on by and clean the crap oh out of my, my tub? God. Don't worry. None of it's mine. <laughs> I swear it's not mine. It's not my poop. I know my poop. It's not my poop. I love the smell of my poop. It definitely doesn't smell like this. Mm, I just remembered the smell. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, no. That's mm. brutal. Nope. nope. Oh, God. The bathroom was nice, though. We're talking like all black stone countertops and black stone floor and wow. original crown molding. It was great. How long did you guys live together? About a year. Only a year? I'd say a little longer, right? Like a like maybe a month or two longer. I think at that time, that's when I started dating an ex girlfriend, and uh, I ended up spending most of my time at her place, as mm. as those things go. So we were still roommates for a big chunk of it, but I would only check in once every couple of weeks and be like, "Yeah, hi, I live here." Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah, you were yeah. connected. Shane's thing was connected to the place. Mm-hmm. So wait, did you have to go like when you had to go to the bathroom? You'd I'd like, have to leave. I'd have to open up my sliding if if it was in the middle of the night. I would have to open up my sliding glass door, take walk out like past like kind of just a, uh, up some steps to the back door, unlock it, get inside, then use the bathroom, then get back out, lock, relock the door, <sighs> go back, open up my sliding glass door, and then. Would you ever just like just be like, I'll hold it, fuck it? Sometimes, I mean, yeah, it, it sucked, man. It it, it really mm. that was probably the worst part about or like, it. Like, what what if it was raining? It never rains. Uh, there was a little awning over the. Uh, over yeah, the it walk. wouldn't bother. But we it was also like a covered driveway. This was during the uh, fifty-year drought that mm. we were in, so mm. rain's not a problem. Yeah, that that was probably the toughest part. And then also during summer, oh god, it <gasps> so the sun would go through the sunroof, mm-hmm. heat up that room because it's cement and terracotta, and it would. Be I, I think it was around in the '90s in my room. Mm-hmm. It was a so greenhouse effect because it was a greenhouse. It was a, it was essentially Basically. a greenhouse, and it was so hot that I would be dripping sweat in the middle of the night. Oh, and uh, it was dope. It was really off. And then in the winter, it would be the opposite, where it'd be like 50 degrees in that room, and I would wake up and just immediately throw a fur blanket around and just like be oh. watching TV in a fur blanket. See, it that made me, sounds nice. It made me really honestly. Before that, I, I lived in an apartment with great AC and everything, and had become uh, very s- sensitive to to mm. temperatures. Aww. After that, after that, I can handle anything. Mm. I I still don't use my AC that often. Wow. I just am like, yeah, I can handle yeah. can handle it. What I did love, though, I'm just getting a lot of, like, sense memories right now. There was something about your room, the way it was set up. Like, you've always taken great care of your space, right? Like, if you have any extra money, you're like, I want to live in a good, organized space, or I want to buy some clothes that make me feel good about myself. So, anyway, going into your room, I remember the smell of, like, that wardrobe that you bought that was pine and so it was like a nice pine smell Aww. with the heat mixed with the fabric of like a new sofa, things like that. And I just, I don't know. I really loved being in that space. It was Aww. nice to visit. When when the temperature <laughs> was nice, it was yeah. actually, I, I felt really proud of the room because I had made what was essentially a non-livable space livable. Mm-hmm. And that was cool. I mean, what, there was a lot of things that did suck. I'd get a lot of like daddy long leg spiders in oh. there. But those are and friendly. Those are friendly, but they're just so creepy looking. Yeah. So when I'm trying to sleep, the thought of one crawling crawling across my face was not cool. Um, Damien, yeah. your room was really cool. Uh, I liked your room a lot. I liked it a lot, too. It was um, it was the master. Thank you. And, I, yeah. you know, because I'm a reclusive person, if my room functions as, like, a studio apartment, 
I'm happy. And I also worked out of there because I worked customer support at the time. Oh, yeah. Um, so I had my computer set up, which I'd built. It was so I had funny. a nice bed. I had a, um, a couch and a TV. It almost was like a separate seating area. And because everything was uh, a very square layout, you could fit everything. So I really liked that space. I didn't like that the walls were so thin. You could hear everything all the time forever. See, um, that was nice for me living out in the... That was a benefit because mm-hmm. I was separated. So I felt like I had privacy in that weird way. Yeah. But I would wake up some mornings and I would hear Damien doing customer support already. Like Aww. you start super early. Yeah, so I work like, the mornings. So like five thirty in the morning, or, or would it be like six? It would be like six or seven, I think. Yeah, but pretty pretty early, especially if I had voiceover to get done first. Um, and I, I tried. I did a little game with myself. I, I don't think I can say the company I worked for because I don't want to give away like it's trade fine. secrets or whatever. So I'll just go like bop bop. And so. Um, <laughs> So I would try to make my voice sound not necessarily robotic, but like a recording and just <laughs> it would really disarm people so that when they figured out I was a real person, they'd be like, oh, I forgot that I was pissed off. So I'd be Hello. like, thank you for calling Bop Bop Customer Support. My name is Damien. How can I help you today? They'd be like, ah, oh, great. Another recording. I'm like, nope, I'm a real person. I promise. And they'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> they'd be like you can you, trust me. You, you really, you're a real person, not a recording. I'd be like, nope, I have hair, emotions, everything. I'm a human. And they'd be like, <laughs> did, you really, just, did you really say Say that? I would say that all the time. I have hair, emotions, everything. Hair, <laughs> emotions. That is really what makes a person not a robot. Hair, yep. hair and hair emotions. emotions. I will everything. say, I have the top customer support rating in the whole gosh dang Wow, thing. did they have your picture somewhere? That's really cool. I don't think they do because I almost got fired from that job. Because my, I was, uh, so when I first started there, they were super, <laughs> um, that face is incredible. Uh, see, be sure to watch the podcast fired. to see that face. So when I first started there, they were super like, you know what? We do customer support differently. We want to be the place that'll like fix it no matter what. So if someone needs like a refund, great. If somebody needs a couple free this, great. Like whatever you do can make to make them happy. We want to keep that reputation. It was like great. And then slowly but surely that became like, all right, guys, we're a corporation and we need more numbers, better numbers, bigger numbers. Do it faster. Do it better. And so <laughs> I was still in the mindset of like, I want to help people. Like people would call in and be like, you know. Hi, I'm wheelchair bound. I can't move anything but my neck. I will be using voice to speech to type in things today and I can't get into my account. That call might take me an hour to try Mm -hmm. to get that person into their account. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that. So my numbers started to dwindle when it was like, hey, you didn't answer 16 emails this hour. And you're like, that's correct. I was helping a disabled old man. It was like, well, that's great and everything, but you got to. So I was just like, I'm going to keep doing this. I will try my best to do what you guys want. But. I was hired with the mindset of like, let's help people. That's what makes me enjoy this job. Aww. So, it's so stupid. By the end of it, I quit, and, the, and my uh, <clears throat> direct supervisor was like, "I'm glad you came to this decision on your own." Um, yeah, I was just like, "Yeah, well, peace." So, Jeez. dang, yeah, that's uh, wild. I remember one time, somehow you you hurt your neck at one point. So I remember you doing, you had like that, one of those like oh, yeah. uh, neck pillow things and like you were doing customer support, <laughs> like this statue with this <laughs> neck pillow, just Thank like, thanks for calling me. My name's Damien. How can I help you today? I have <laughs> hair, emotions, everything. everything. Pretty much everything. <laughs> it would be so funny though, waking up sometimes at like six in the morning, like getting ready to go to the gym oh. or whatever. And just hearing this faint, like, thanks for calling so-and-so. My name's Damien. How can I help you? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. From, from wherever is so, so, so funny. Cute. That's and then like you'd immediately get off the clock and immediately charge up Dark Souls 2 or something oh, like that. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be like, all right, it's gamer time. time. For it's finally, I could go home from work and stay in the exact same chair and just, oh, I was so happy. I also took long bathroom breaks. <laughs> Uh, yeah. yeah, it was great. <laughs> Honestly, that house, like, looking back, there's so many stories. Just Do you have it, pictures? I have some photos of my room. When I, I had really? Set up. Yeah. It, it doesn't wow. look as bad. Because what made it tough was not how it looked. What made it tough was just literally, like, what it was made of. Like, it was mm. cement. Fighting the color. elements? Yeah, yeah. It, it was what it was. But uh, but it looked, it looked okay. But uh, of the actual house, I don't think I have any, but I'm sure you do. I, I don't. Well, wow. I did... Uh, 
I think the day we moved in, I was very, uh, again, I was having stomach problems. I I don't know if, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but I battled like major stomach issues for a long time and yeah. sometimes had trouble eating. Sometimes it would be like a day or two until I could do that again. Um, so I, like we moved and I hadn't eaten in a long time and I was very out of it. So I was just moving my car for whatever reason. And I took out this like brick structure leading to one of our staircases. And I was like, well, great. First day, there goes security deposit. Aww. Should probably take a picture of this. <sighs> so I got, a, I'm sure I got a picture of that somewhere. Oh my Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. What a bummer. I've messed up a couple security deposits. I still really? somehow get them back. The the place where I live with the guys, the roommate one was fine, but Django chewed up the doors oh, of, of my happen. current one and the the one I was living in previously, the one I hated. It was mm-hmm. basically just like a little it was so small. You were there for like room. fifteen minutes. Yeah, I know. I think I was there for like three months. Django did work. Yeah, I, I tried to fix it myself. I used mm. it I used that paste to kinda like shape it and I sanded it back down, but I never repainted it. Uh. It was white, but yeah, I still got the deposit back and more because they were they were actually <laughs> what? that place was terrible. They they lied about what my rent was. Oh, they yeah. lied about a lot of things. It was crazy. That place is known for that. I don't think we can say the name, no, but like in LA, that place is known for being it, shady. It was a place I lived Bro. at uh, when I was a teenager when I mm-hmm. first moved out here. It was. It's an infamous place. You probably can guess it. If you're in LA, you know what this yeah, is. But yeah. they gave you more money? Okay, yeah. So, well, first of all, for the people listening or watching, if you're getting an apartment, try to find ones that are more like mom and pop vibes of, of, mm-hmm. of the ownership or management. Sometimes that's better than a corporation... Because it's not as there's well trade offs, but cor- yeah. corporate ones, you know, your rent is probably going to get raised by at least a hundred bucks every year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's been these, my experience. These people, they 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 said in an email and on the tour, they said what my rent was going to be, and then when I started making those payments online, I started seeing like the base rent was like a hundred dollars more than what they said. And normally, like, first of all, they never responded to emails, ever, oh. like, until I moved. Like, they were super quick when I was getting in the process of moving in. Of but course once they I was were. In, yeah. yeah. Once I was in there, it was like you'd never get a response. And I had one specific person that I, would, I was always, like, trying to keep my work consistent with, like, okay, I always talk to this guy. Mm-hmm. And I would call the office and be like, hey, I, I sent you an email. And he'd be like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> I'd be like... Read the email right now. Yeah. And like he would, and like a lot of times if it wasn't something, like I was lucky that the in the email they said that my rent was going to be lower than what they tra- were charging me. Otherwise it would have been like, well, sorry, you agreed to it on your contract. So wow. you have to pay that. They also on the tour were like, oh yeah, no, security's great here. We're going to keep you super safe. Bull-dingus. Nobody gets in. La, 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 la. Everyone gets in there. Yeah, dude, all I have to say is, like, oh, I'm an Uber, and then they don't even check any credentials, mm-hmm. if, like, nothing. They just let you in. And, like, when I, co- I went back in my contract, and in your contract it says, like, we did not tell you that we could keep you safe from anything. We, are, we, have, we have no responsibility over your security, and we did not tell you that we could keep you safe. Get out of here. Like, literally protecting their own people like that um in super fine yeah. text it's very small it yeah. just says uh we have tremors don't worry about it <laughs> <laughs> wait what's this thing about tremors what <laughs> just don't put up. your boom box on the ground I haven't man. heard so, of tremors in a long ass time i thought it was a perfect time for a tremors reference <laughs> tremors is an awesome movie about giant monster worms that live underground that oh my uh, God. react to sound and will eat anything tremors uh, 2 is better just so everyone knows which is the one with chuck norris is that there's one with Chuck Norris. Is that, or am I completely making that up? Is that a weird childhood memory where like I I made something up? Because I've seen maybe I, I am I am making it up. It was Kevin Bacon in the first Tremors. I saw a tweet the know. other day that but was I thought like, Chuck Norris was in one of them, but I'm, I think I'm completely wrong. I think that's my memory. Yeah, you saw from when I was like six watching a movie, m- making things up. Mm. I saw a tweet the other day that was like Chuck Norris. Uh, <laughs> oh. Infinity's got it. Hold on. While, while you're Yo, looking Jimmy, that, pull that up. Yeah, well, what team? <laughs> while you're looking for that, I saw a tweet the other day that was like, uh, was this a real animated movie or just a childhood fever dream starter kit? And I it was saw like, that. Rock a doodle do, once upon a forest. Um, we're back. <laughs> we're back at Dinosaur Story. And then uh, Rodney Danger, not Rodney Danger, yeah, the, Rover Dangerfield. Rover Dangerfield. <laughs> so Chuck Norris is not in them, but there is an assistant editor named Charles Norris who did Tremors 5 Blood. You're probably <laughs> thinking of the assistant editor. I'm thinking of the assistant <laughs> editor. Yeah. Uh, it was silly 
God. they made that mistake. I oh, this is changing the subject kind of, but I remember watching Tremors when I was staying with my grandparents in Florida. I would stay with them for like a month or so in the mm. summers when I was a kid, when I was like seven to twelve years old. And back then, you know, there wasn't Netflix. There wasn't any. And back in my day. Um, <laughs> but uh, so I would end up watching so many weird random movies. And one time I was watching a Chuck Norris movie with my grandpa. And there comes a part in this movie. It's some cheesy, cheesy, like random Chuck Norris movie where like Chuck Norris and this other guy have like each other at a standoff. They both have their guns pointed at each other mm. and they both drop their guns and like lift up their hands and they start, you know, Duking throwing hands, out? roundhouse kicks, whatever. And my grandpa, like in all earnest, just just goes, now see, they drop their guns because they want to they want to test each other's Kung Fu abilities. <laughs> <laughs> like in dead serious like he was just teaching, teaching he, he thought it was a teaching That's moment what you're gonna have for to do his son now see what teaching they're doing here you. grandson is they're dropping their guns because they need to test each other in kung fu see Chuck <laughs> Norris knows wushu kwan whereas wow. uh, this other guy is more like, of like a Shaolin kung fu style like legitimately so. breaking down a Chuck Norris movie <laughs> that is so it's, funny it was honestly very cute like That's it's adorable. a very like adorable That's a good moment Dude, yeah it's very funny you know what my grandpa used to do mm. He used to pirate DVDs and give them to us by the stack. Hell yeah. Uh, my grandpa could never. My grandpa is the most honorable man. He could not break a single law. <laughs> He's not like a dirty rogue like you, grandpa. Yeah. <laughs> like your grandpa. He would download the movies, cut out all the inappropriate parts, and then give them to us. And he would even like somehow get well, now the, it's the cover of the DVD on the disc. That, wow. Now it's much more adorable. That's great. I like to think he recut movies so they'd have happy endings. Yeah, like, like Pulp Fiction, sure. they're all friends at the yeah. end. <laughs> it's just the dancing. <laughs> it's and just that's how they the end dancing. It. Like, hey. that's the problem. I don't think I saw the sex scene in Titanic until I was like 13. Wow. Because mm. I don't think I knew. Like when, because Marissa had, because Titanic was so long. If you got it on VHS, it was in two tapes. Right. Yeah. So you'd have to take out the first one put in the next one and I was like what there's two tapes I miss I miss that that sort of stuff because I was the same with video games too there'd yeah. be some where you'd have to take out the first disc put oh, the second yeah. oh I just got chills thinking of a boss you fight in 7 Final Fantasy 7 and they're like please enter disc 2 and I'm like I finally did it <laughs> yeah. it was all my, always my sister's game so I could only get so far and then when I finally made it to disc 2 I was like oh, oh, oh. We killed Aerith. Now put in disc two. Dude, spoiler! <laughs> you have to cut that out. They're doing the remake. So many people don't oh. know. Oh. <laughs> oh if you don't know God. that by now, you're not a true gamer. A lot of people out there aren't true I gamers. I guess that's Ow. fair. That hurts. That's fair. Dude. What you didn't know about that is you're not some kind of true gamer? I'm a true gamer. What's your thoughts on Final Fantasy VIII? Better or worse yeah. than seven? I haven't played a single Final Fantasy. <laughs> oh, I could have played But I've played lots of Lego. And uh, lots of Dead or Alive and lots of Star Wars, buddy. The same. So like three video games. <laughs> what do you think? Squall, Tetis, or a Cloud? Which one's best? Obviously Cloud. Shane, good, good, fair answer. Sun. Okay, let's guys, right. thank you for joining us for Smashcast <laughs> today. Cool. This is over. Uh, GamerCast is not happening. GamerCast, dang it. The answer is, was Ramza from Final Fantasy Tactics, by the way. That's like Final Fantasy. That's like the anime of video games, isn't it? No, I wouldn't. I mean, uh, not really. There's more that are more really. anime than that, like the Tales series. Yeah, and that's that's the first RPG I ever played. Tales of Symphonia, baby. That that shit changed my life. That was a great game. Demon Frang. Yeah, Kevin knows what I'm talking about. He's nodding. Editor. Yeah, it's a great game. Really, really cool. Because you're trying to save the planet. You're trying to bring back like, like happiness and joy to your to your world and halfway through the game you realize by doing so Courtney's yawning but but listen <laughs> listen up halfway through the game you realize by bringing light and everything back to your world you're sucking it out of a parallel like dimension it was, so yeah it was funny because back on the days of Shane and I being on so random my dressing room was the one where we set up some game systems so we could actually I, I used to be I don't know why I wasn't reclusive back then but this at that point I was like hey, everyone come hang out so we played Tales of Symphonia together and it only took like one or two boss fights where like <laughs> I remember watching something happen I'm like there looks like there was a shadow in that portal like there's someone on the other side we're doing bad stuff right now, aren't we? We're gonna end up being the bad guys, like we're doing the bad thing, and like that's oh, the no. twist. And I was and like, was just like, yeah. <laughs> that oh took me so God. long to figure out. <laughs> you we were also own... like ten. What? You had your own dressing room. 
Yeah, we all did. Yeah, we all had our own dressing That's rooms. That's so. What were they like? How big were they? They were pretty decent size. Uh, about the size had, of this room. I had Demi's old dressing room, I believe. Really? I believe mine Demi was. Was it haunted? It was haunted by Demi Lovato. He's still no. very much alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. my gosh! No, uh, it, they were very cool. It was it was a sweet setup. God, I remember one time playing Doug. I was playing our castmate Doug Brochu at, at Super Smash Brothers, mm-hmm. and I just I was on a winning streak, and he got so oh. mad he slammed his feet down so hard that everyone in the entire hallway of, of dressing rooms heard, and like some people came to our room and was like, "Is everything okay?" Oh my <laughs> like, god! Yeah, we're so just into uh, kicking some arse. Don't even worry about it. Um, <sighs> and I would save every. I started saving every script, and we would go through four different scripts every week because mm-hmm. we'd have several like writers' drafts, production drafts, whatever, and final drafts. And by the end of my stint on on So Random, that stack was like six feet tall. Mm. Lots of paper. And that wasn't all of them. That was just from when I started, which was like halfway through. I wish I still had those. I don't believe I, I have. Do. I have a couple scripts. I've kept, I've kept a lot cool. of scripts. I have a script from my guest star on iCarly. Uh, mm. Every guest star I ever did, I kept the script. I kept a script from the indie film I did in 2008. That's so cute. Kept some so random ones. Uh, yeah, I did, I, I did that for my like Cartoon Network. I do it for voiceover stuff. Aww. So I did it for like my Cartoon Network stuff. Was yeah. there like a lot of downtime when you guys were on, sun, on oh, yeah. So Random? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember it was one of our final weeks on So Random and we, were, we me, Damien, and Matthew Scott watched the final episode of Oprah. <laughs> remember <laughs> that? It was one of our final oh days gosh. on So Random and so I we all watched the that. final episode of Oprah. Wow. And uh, yeah, I remember that. That was like kind of a very sad moment because it was just like, wow, Oprah's ending. Everything's ending. And so, so is random this. Oprah. Aww. There's no TV left. Yeah. You guys knew it was going to be the final, like... We knew the season was ending, and I mean, some of us, we all had different uh, hopes of if the show would get renewed or not. I had a feeling that it wasn't. Mm. I was very, like, pessimistic about it. I think you were... Li- you. Kinda- I was very hopeful, because here's the thing about it. Disney shows usually go three or four seasons, because that's enough. The, a generation grows up with that show, loving that show, then they get they age out of it, and then the show is done by the time they mm-hmm. like age out of it. Also, like you know, you make more money each year with your contracts, so they don't always let things go too far. It's, it's a smart money-making move for Disney TV. Our show was a spinoff of Demi Lovato's show. It Sunny was with Sunny Chance. with a Chance, was, and it became... I loved that show. Exactly, but like after four or five years, you wouldn't have probably mm-hmm. been into it, right? Mm-hmm. So like... It was a spinoff where they took the sketch show that was within that show and made its own thing called So Random. But contractually, it was not a new thing. It was the fourth year of Sonny with a Chance. And you had Mm. a lot of those actors who had been there for all four years. So it had kind of run its course. And on top of that, part of their like business model, at least as I understand it, is if you look like something like Bella Thorne's show, uh, Shake It Up or Kicking It or something like that, they can sell the lunchboxes. They have the Bella Thorne clothing line at Walmart mm-hmm. that you can buy. They have all that. You don't get to do that with a sketch show. Yeah. And so That's there was how they just. make the most money. Yeah. I think probably one of the weirdest things in my life has been when I joined Smosh mm. and just hearing all the same exact things being said about me that I had heard years prior on So Random. What do you mean? Really? Which is, I hate all these new people. Oh, uh, uh, it was better when Demi was on. Mm-hmm. And now then it became, uh, I hate when Smosh added all these new people. And then it was better when Anthony was on. And I'm just like, you, it's Whoa, the same exact sucks. situation. It's hard, man. Yeah. Um, it, it's so interesting. People just don't, people are just resistant to change, I think. But uh, it's necessary. And it, it, there's no option. Like with So Random, there was no choice. Like that's. That's just what yeah. what mm-hmm. both parties wanted. and uh, What was your guys' first uh, encounter with each other? I know the exact moment. Um, oops, sorry. I bumped the table. Sorry <laughs> How for dare shuffled. you? Shane had already been on the show for a week or so. By the time I joined, they were adding people very slowly. And so I remember getting on a set, not knowing exactly where I was going, but walking by Shane. And for whatever reason, I know this sounds corny, but for whatever reason, I felt like, I'm going to know that dude. Aww. Interesting. And so, yeah, then I went up for the table read and he was there. We introduced ourselves and there you go. I, I remember get that. I remember, yeah, it was the table read that I really like saw him. And I was nervous at first because I had done one episode. Mm-hmm. So they brought me on for one episode. And I had assumed, because it was me and like, 
two or three other new people on top of this new cast. So I was like, oh, cool. Like we're the new cast that they're adding. Mm -hmm. And then, so I was like, I'm doing a good job. Like I felt pretty good about how I did that episode. The next week I see Damien and I go, oh God, I did a terrible job and they're replacing me. Oh, that was my no. initial thought. It was wow. nothing to do with, with you. I no, was just like, course. I was like, oh God, like I would have thought the uh, same thing. crap, like whatever. And then I you, you were in the table read, you were crushing it. Cause you had like, they all kind of like took characters some some characters that we'd kind of done in our auditions mm -hmm. or whatever. So you had like, uh, f what was it that you did? Was it, uh, what was your character? The, the ones that I did in the table read, they all wrote for me. It wasn't anything oh, I really? in, I don't think. What was the one that you did first? It was like the, the something kid in, in school. Zombie Man or <laughs> Olaf Glutella. Olaf Glutella was, was the one. Okay. Olaf Glutella. But he was a fake foreign exchange student. <laughs> it was really yeah. great. Yeah. Oh my um, god! And then it, kind of the same thing happened the following week, which is when our friend Matthew Scott joined. I thought he joined before or me. Did he join? I thought it was you and Matthew Scott, and then I came on. Were you the third week? I think so. Then I I'm getting things mixed up because both times then I was like, oh god, this person's replaced me because oh, oh no. Matthew Scott was after because I thought I thought the same thing. I was like, he's funny as hell because oh, Matthew no. Scott came in and oh. Matthew yeah. Scott just has a presence about him mm -hmm. and he did this character that did become a huge hit on the show. Mm -hmm. If I had known like, and I eventually realized after like week four that I was like, we're all just staying on. That's awesome. Well, here's the problem: they they brought us on as guest stars, right? And so the way things are organized for TV, if you're like uh, a main you know cast member, then and you're there. You're pretty much there every week. If you're a co-star, it's like a guest situation. And that's sort of what they kept yeah. us at. So they were like, hey, we're going to bring you on for like two to three weeks at a time. And then, you know, nothing else. And be like, great. So we would do those two weeks and be like, I don't know. And then they'd be like, oh, yeah, we're going to bring you on for a couple more. And it'd be like, oh, great. Finally, more work. That's awesome. And so it wasn't until pretty much near the end of it that I was like, oh, we're doing a full season of a show. But oh. people ask, like, what was it like getting the news that you were on this show? And I'm like, I never got that news. Yeah. I literally thought like, okay, cool. One more week of work. Yeah. One they would more let week. us know every week if we mm -hmm. were on the next episode. That's and crazy. Uh, it's kind of sad. They, we all missed, we all, they would all make sure that we missed one episode each so that they could keep us as guest stars. Is that why they did that? That is why, because Whoa. legally speaking, you can't be a regular. I don't, th I don't <sighs> think, but they was very specific that we all were in 25 out of 26 episodes. That's crazy, <laughs> it's dude. It's pretty brutal. Disgusting. Because I remember, I remember it was also, they, I don't know if it was on purpose or not, but my manager at one point, because it was like week seven, my manager was like, hey, what are the chances of him becoming a regular? And they're like, it's not possible. And also we don't need him for next week's episode. Episode. And I was, it was like, all oh, right, Ooh. they are uh, going for it. Um, and I, I remember that week just sucked because I'm just like, because at that point we were all friends, whatever. So I'm like, great, they're all mm. there filming an episode and I'm at home. Like, you're not even, I'm not even a regular, so I don't have any way to get on set. Mm -hmm. That week I'm literally not allowed to go on that lot. Mm. Like, I'm not allowed there. Mm -hmm. So I'm just Jesus. like, oh, I'm forbidden now for this week and then I'll be back. It was That's weird, so man. Weird. Eight straight months on that show, but we were never officially on it. Yeah. It was really trippy. It's a trippy experience. We even went to D23. We did. We went to D23. The Disney convention. Aww. Disney's VidCon. And, uh... <laughs> but, no, but the show had not premiered by that time yet, I don't think. So, for especially for us new cast, like, People never knew who we were. Like, especially, we yeah. would have a live audience taping and they'd be like, oh, we got one of the stars of the show. Bring out Shane Top and Damien Haas. And all the kids would be like, who? Aww. Where's what? Denim? And like, Dude. Bring out Where? Denim La Bamba. <laughs> Denim La Bamba. Uh, Dude. But, so it was very weird. And so, again, I talked about this uh, the other day with someone, but like, because we never filmed at a time when the show had already premiered, and because I became sort of a recluse after that and went to the gym during the day when kids are in school, went to the grocery store during the day when kids are in mm. school, I didn't get recognized for So Random for like years. And so I assumed like, ah, nobody watched that show. Aww. So it wasn't until we joined Smosh that people were like, I didn't put that together that those were, he's Zombie Man and those were the anime bros, which That's character crazy. Shane and I pitched. Yeah, and you yeah. guys were just, I happened to show that video this morning. Someone tweeted it to it's me today, so which good. is cool. Yeah, yeah, anime brothers. Was fun. I will say, I, um, I, I was obsessed with Sunny with a Chance. I was mm. a big, I watched a lot of Disney Channel when I was growing up and like I was obsessed with that show. That first episode 
where Sunny comes in. I've I I feel like that was exactly how I was when I came into Smosh. She's just like, ha, interesting. I'm here. Who's that? Who's that? And like uh, I remember eventually seeing like, oh, what's this? So random. Okay, I wonder what it. That's it's probably the same thing. Oh, right? so you saw it. But and I oh, I think I wow. saw like a couple episodes, and I was like, wasn't a fan. What's this? <laughs> I was like, oh, I get it. Okay, so this was the the sketch show that they were making. Right. Okay. Click. Yeah. <laughs> you actually just reminded me of something kind of funny. Years before uh, Sunny with a Chance was the thing, um, the original pitch name was Sketchpad. And I know that because when I was a teenager, I auditioned for that. I think the I auditioned for that too. What? Oh, wait, I, did, I heard about I, it and I couldn't get an audition for it somehow. I auditioned for it and went back for like three rounds. And this was when I was still in Atlanta and I didn't end up booking it, but it was for one of the like main, I don't know if it was like Sterling Knight's part or whatever. But um, when I walked into the audition room years later for So Random, I was like, this sounds like the same thing. Like Sketchpad was supposed to be a sketch show. It became Sunny with a Chance and then it became back So Random. So when I walk in, it's the same casting director. And she says, oh my gosh, I remember you. I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to see what you've got. And I was what? like, that's the best way ever to start that's an audition. Awesome. And I flipping booked it. So Aww. it was like, casting directors have the most insane memory. They do. They really do. They'll remember. Shout out Cheryl Levine. Can do I say not- that? Yeah. Shout out Cheryl sure. Levine. I love you and miss Do you. Do not murder well. anyone in front of a casting director because they will remember your face, <laughs> your name, uh, your expressions. I always forget that I knew Sterling Knight when I was a teenager. Interesting. I was, I like knew him and we knew, like, and then I ended up booking that and it was like, oh, hey, how's it going, man? <laughs> Good so to see you again. Crazy, Sup, dude. dude. Sup, dude. Sup. What's up, man? So, uh, yeah, Sarandon was a weird time, man. It, it seems like this weird fantasy like dream that happened for it's a, a long bit. time ago but also not that long ago yeah, yeah. really not it was only eight or nine what, years, I was 20 right? so it was only seven years ago that it ended seven years mm. yeah closer to eight but still that's not that long ago but it feels like a different age yeah wow um so and here you are doing the sketch comedy still here we are yeah We're doing and, it. and here you are Hanging Here's with me. the two guys from your favorite show. Yeah. The so Courtney's Rumbus. favorite show. <laughs> with Dembin Babamba. Denim Labamba. <laughs> I, on some rhombus. I just love when I get DMs that are like, were you on That So Random? Uh, they Speaking still, everyone, so everyone still calls it That So oh, Random. Oh, that's just funny. So random. Yeah. Dude, that's nuts. That's so random. Uh, yeah. And then I got the Smosh job on one of my first auditions ever. That's rad. That's nuts. How old were you? Uh, I was... You were 19, 12. I was 19. I was 19. Wow, crazy. I just, I, I was 19 about to turn 20. Couldn't even vote. Couldn't even vote. I was 35. Wow. Now I'm, I'm younger. <laughs> I actually, I actually somehow, I think I do look younger now than I did when really? I joined. Really? I think I looked, color? I think I looked like a dad when I joined. I'd also just the way I dressed and everything. Oh, and I, you kept just, your hair dark, like Courtney was saying. My hair was dark still when yeah. I joined, but I just think I also just didn't, I don't know. I, I was, I just didn't give a crap at that point. I th- God. Uh, uh, That's so cute. What did you look like, Damien? When I first joined? Yeah. I was just coming out of my stomach issue stuff, and uh, so I was much thinner, um, like, but not in like a super healthy way. It was like just like freaky Ugh. skinny. Not freaky skinny. Like Stephen but, like, King's thinner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just like a lot skinnier. Um, had had mostly wore my glasses. Um, yeah, I also was like broke as a joke for a long time before Aww. joining Smosh. So like new clothes, what are those? I'll wear hand me downs for my boss at the retail store that I work. Oh like, my god! And they were often like stained, and I'm like, whatever, cool. Thanks for the clothes. Wow. They're four year ago fashions, but that's dope. I'll take them. I was wearing hand me downs for most for like up until I was like 15. I started finally buying, being able to like get my own clothes. Nice. I, I wore. Uh, my wardrobe was so small when I joined. Uh, not, I didn't have a ton of money, but also just that's just how I was. I had one pair of boots mm. that I wore every day. I had one pair of jeans that's that I'd wear so a lot. Bad. And then just a couple shirts that I would rotate through. But that's kind of like an actor wardrobe because you just are like, well, mm-hmm. I can't wear logos. I'm going to generally wear blue for auditions. Yep. So I'm going to keep this that's blue. That's so crazy. Those. And then what I also wore, what I started wearing a lot uh, shortly after joining was I would wear shorts with a tank top and like a button up short sleeve shirt over that and flip flops. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And our Surfing. head writer, Ryan, despised it. <laughs> he hated it so much. And I would come in just in my flip flops to work and he'd be like, 
oh, so this is what you're, uh, all right, this is what you're doing today. <laughs> I'm just like, you got it. You dress like a tourist coming to California being like, I got to fit the part. I got to look yeah. like a Californian. Uh, Cali. Cali, baby. Cali life. Oh, my God. Oh, my man. fashion was weird. It was just mostly me trying to hide my crippling insecurities. Uh, and like, I feel that. Just, I feel that. It was like in between your fashion. You're like, I'm just, like, I wore the flannel around my hips to make my hips look bigger. But, like... It, and that was yeah. There's a lot, not a lot going on. I there. feel like that's what people wear when they're teenagers, because I that's kind of how I dressed up until I was like honestly like twenty. To make your hips look bigger. Yeah, to make my hips look, mm-hmm. no. But I would just I would wear things based more on what did I want to hide. Yeah. As mm-hmm. opposed to now I dress in a way of like oh this looks cool that'll or this is crazy yeah. this will pop. Um, totally. So, yeah. You know. We're so cute now. We're all just yeah. very. We're all just honestly very cute. <laughs> Uh, make sure to watch the video version of this podcast to see how cute we look. Yes, do that. And then the video version comes out on Fridays. Uh, if you just want to hear us, uh, which it, you get to hear all the swear words, which I don't think we said a, lot, a whole lot of swear words. We didn't. This time we didn't. Around. We dropped a couple S's and one F, and then you oh, had a yeah. JC, but it's whatever. What's a JC? Uh, just Jesus Cristo. Oh, just chilling. Ha! <laughs> just chilling. Oh, whoa! Do you know how many baby angels you just killed by saying that? <laughs> Calm it down, Miller. Uh, yeah, okay, but yeah, the, the full audio version comes out on Wednesday. It's full video version on mm-hmm. Fridays. Uh, or So when you just, if you love us, hit the bell. There's a bell somewhere. You'll hit find it. Hit the bell it. if you love and us. If you, if love you us, don't you hit the bell, then that means you don't love us. Hitting mm-hmm. that bell is a little equivalent to getting giving us a little kiss right below the right eye. On yeah. each individual cornea. And if you also, side note, if you don't go watch Tinder for Hot Dogs right now, I don't care if you've already watched it, you need to go watch it again right now. That video, if that video doesn't get a million views, by, if it's not at 10 million views, if it's not the number one, if Jimmy Fallon isn't looking up to Tinder for hot dogs going, how do I do that? Then <laughs> I swear the sun is going to explode. <laughs> Dude. Please. Saying please never hurts. Or at the very least, if you want to check out this Tinder for Hot Dogs merch or our other Smosh merch, we have those on Smosh.store. Check them out. Our merch is so comfy. Yeah. You can do anything in our merch. If you wear our shirts, you will be more powerful. <laughs> Dude. Mm. We're going to get sued. Mm. Yeah, the FCC is going to be... Uh... You no, can't promise that, that, that t-shirts FTC? will make people more powerful. <sighs> It'll give you plus one charisma. <laughs> and and plus two against ogres. Yeah, plus two against ogres. Nice. Uh, plus one charisma. The water bottle gives you plus three stamina. But you have to take an exotic penalty because oh. it's an exotic weapon. Gosh. Yeah, exactly. Dang um, it. Yeah. The Tinder for Hot Dog shirt, though, gives you plus one at all stats. Mm. Charm. All stats. You're agility, in good hands. Uh, style. Strength. I, I think Tinder for Hot Dogs shirt would be one of those that has, like, a drawback where it's, like, you know, you get, like, plus ten strength. And you're like, oh, but, like, minus five wisdom. And you're like, oh. Yeah. So you have to. Because, you know, Tinder for Hot Dogs is dumb as hell. I love it. It's dumb as hell. But also very powerful. Uh, it's No, it's incredible. It's the greatest thing. And the video is even better. I mean better. that in a good way. Listen, we'll it's look. There are haters out there. There are I'm doubters. A, well, I'm not a hater. That to Damien is the number one doubter of <laughs> Tinder for hot dogs. Prove him wrong. Da- prove Damien wrong. <laughs> I love Tinder for hot dogs. I just think it's lunacy. <laughs> no, this, this is this is this is us going for look, it. Look, Damien, for you're not sure. alone. Everyone no, is doubting weird. Tinder for hot dogs. It's weird. That's that's why it, it is an underdog story. Get out of here, guys. How have I not used that up until now? Holy crap, yeah. guys. It is an under hot dog story. All right, we got to get out of here. I need to go watch some Sunny with Chance. And yeah, I, I got to go, go take a bathroom in Courtney's bathroom. Hey. And okay. I need to make sure that you're all watching Tinder for hot okay. dogs. You boys are so cute. Thanks for being oh, on the show. Thanks, thanks for letting me oh, host. Thanks, Courtney. Oh, Courtney. my gosh. I'm so happy that this happened. Shucks. Okay. Okay, goodbye. We got to go. All right, we have to leave now. Okay. Gross. Bye. Oh, my eyes. <laughs>